Hello and welcome to Reality TV Cringe. I am one of your hosts, Delia, and I'm here with my real tight homegirl, my co-host, and my daughter-in-law, we are here to talk Sister Wives Season 19, episode, is it nine? I think so. Episode nine. Yeah. In which we see Cody and Robin mm-hmm. meet David yes. at Gwendolyn's bridal shower slash engagement party. Mm-hmm. We also have a very interesting conversation with Mary and Janelle about... Yes. Coyote Pass. That was juicy. And of course, the best part (laughs) was David and Christine house shopping. Oh, so riveting. Love it. Love it so much. Now, before we get into it, we do want to issue you a disclaimer. Please hide your wife and hide your kids. This is a politically incorrect podcast. We say a lot of bad words. We have dumb opinions Mm -hmm. and we're not going to apologize for it. So if you're sensitive, you might want to find yourself another dumpster. But if you're ready to talk about these Mormons and have a party, Ah. welcome to this dumpster. And if you are ready to have fun with us, be sure to follow us on Instagram at Reality TV Cringe and join us on Patreon, (gasps) patreon.com slash Reality TV Cringe. That's where all of the bonus juicy Mm -hmm. stuff, uncensored Mm -hmm. video versions Mm -hmm. of the podcast, so much more. We do have some fun plans for Christmas. We do. We're going to be doing some some and cool New stuff at New Year's, some yeah. cool stuff with the raccoons. So yeah. do join us in the Patreon dumpster. Now, if you are watching on YouTube, please do not forget to like and comment and share and subscribe. Please don't forget to subscribe because so many of you who are watching are not subscribed, Rude. which is confounding me <laughs> and confusing me. It's offensive to me. And it's hurting her feelings. Yeah. So don't forget to subscribe. Do all of those things Thank you in advance. Thank you. Now, before we get into this episode, we got a couple of things we got to go through with Mm -hmm. you. First and foremost, we do have a somewhat newsworthy item. Now, some of you know that the young and the resplendent, the beautiful Maddie Brush, is that her last name? I think so. Yeah. Maddie Brush, married to Caleb, Mm -hmm. has started her own podcast. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's just what we need is another podcast, honey. So many podcasts. Yes. Everyone thinks that they're interesting, like us. I know. I mean, at least we are <laughs> interesting, we are interesting. I mean, at least we are funny. Yeah. At least we're doing something out here. Yeah. But yeah, everybody does value their own voice in this society. Yes. So Maddie started a podcast with her friend. I think this was uh, what we're going to talk about is from the second episode. Yeah. So let me get into it. Let me pull it up really quickly. Now Maddie's new podcast is called The Authentic Society. Wow. (laughs) Which is a very interesting name. Sure. And without a crystal ball, who is a content creator on YouTube and on Instagram, she is highly controversial. Don't come for us in the dumpster. We We know we get it. She does, however, sometimes provide information in a succinct way, and that's helpful for us. Yeah. She listened to this second episode of The Authentic Society, wherein Maddie did talk a little bit about her home life and her father. First and foremost, Maddie confirms that she is no contact with Cody for a variety of reasons. Here's what she shared. First and foremost, he yells at her. Second, he lies on the show and to others about her. Third, he refuses to take accountability. We know all of these things. We've been watching this show for many, many seasons. Next, he exposed Maddie to, quote unquote, really bad people. Oh. In fact, Maddie blamed all the parents for subjecting their kids to being associated with exploitative and criminal people during their childhood. Um, yikes. I'm wondering what that means. I'm like, who are we talking about? Because we've seen a few people that they've been exposed mm-hmm. to on the show. Is she talking about those people? Like some of the other polygamists or? Uh, it could be some of the other polygamists or people just in their general church family. Mm. I, I am not sure, but yes. that sounds scary. Uh, Maddie stated she will never spank her children. Her decision not to spank has caused numerous fights between her and other adults in the family. She likened the spanking to having her will broken like a baby elephant at a circus. Yikes. 
That's so interesting. Just sidebar here. So there are other adults in her family. She doesn't specify whether that's on Caleb's side or the Brown family, but that are objecting to her not spanking her kids. Like, how dare you I mean, tell me how to raise my child? Honestly, it's my family, so mm. fuck off. Who do we think out. that it would be? Probably the majority of them if they all grew up like that. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't know. Maybe the millennials, maybe not. Because that's like a newer thing where mm-hmm. people are like, no, we're not spanking our kids. Like, I'm not going to be doing that. I didn't spank my child. I got spanked mm-hmm. all the fucking time. Oh, I did too, honey. Yeah, I ain't about that life. My father spanked us with a hairbrush and it was like one of those really wide men hairbrushes. Ugh. He would actually place it on the mantle just underneath the television. It was named Biter. Oh my God. Yes. That's it was like a constant threat in my home that we were going to get our asses beat. Yikes. And so when I had my child, your wife, I swatted her diaper a couple of times, mm-hmm. but then I'm like, N- I'm just never going to do that again because oh. I just didn't like how it made her feel. Yeah. She was like, what are you doing? We got the wooden spoon and mm. sometimes the belts. But mm. like, I know some people think like that's good discipline. Like some people think that that's like necessary. So it is kind of like a divisive yeah. topic. I bet some of the older parents, like probably Mary, because mm-hmm. <laughs> Mary, yeah. Maddie's talked about it on her um, Twitter, but deleted some of the tweets. She kind of alluded to the fact that Mary was an abusive person both physically and emotionally i don't think janelle janelle was like working all the time so right. was she really a disciplinarian she doesn't strike me as one yeah. and frankly neither does christine but cody kind cody of does i sure. could see cody and mary doing that so maddie is not uh meeting out corporal punishment to her children and Based. i like that love it um, Maddie also says that she had no idea how abusive her home life was until she became an adult and had a family. I'd love to hear more about that. I'd love to hear more about that. She says Janelle's assertion that her kids are well adjusted is not true. Maddie is unlearning so much from her past. Yikes. Maddie says that Janelle relied a lot on Maddie at age six to take care of her siblings. Maddie said that she will never force her children to raise their siblings. So she's calling out being parentified by Janelle. Yep. Which is very interesting. Yeah. Because they seem so closely allied. They do. I know Mm -hmm. they have their business together. So it is interesting that she's just straight shooting it well maybe janelle's taking accountability at this season in her life yeah maybe they're having conversations about it maddie accused cody of being verbally abusive and forcing the family to obey him and there is no room for criticism Mm. this is why he's estranged from most of his kids according to maddie i believe it uh maddie says that janelle calls maddie rude because she doesn't sugarcoat what she feels and she tells people the truth and last but not least maddie is no contact with numerous family members due to abuse which that just screams mary yeah (laughs) for sure yeah yeah because she's obviously still talking to christine Mm -hmm. and christine's kids and janelle obviously and her siblings most of her siblings yeah i would imagine i wonder if she's talking to leon at all i'm not sure i wonder if she talks to all of christine's children Mm. oh like maybe not peyton because peyton maybe not gwen oh mm. i'm not sure I would love for more details. Yes, into please that. elaborate. Like if you're such a straight shooter and so honest, please just spill it all. Just speak clearly. That'd be great. Like I was watching Aspen in this episode for the 100th time talk about how she loves David, but he is kind of rushing things. And the way that she was just speaking, it's like she's taken all this training from her parents. Mm-hmm. It's very diplomatic. It's saying something, but not actually giving much information. And I'm like, oh, Jesus, not you too. I know. She's definitely curating her mm-hmm. speech and how she comes off on the show. And I mean... Ugh, I like I get it because they're all on the show and like Cody's been spewing vitriol for years, which has just damaged the family like irreversibly. Like I get how they want to be careful and stuff, but I'm like, you're also on a show. Yeah. <laughs> like, why don't you just be honest mm-hmm. about like how you feel about things? It's okay. It's not going to destroy your relationships. Like it wouldn't destroy your relationship with Christine if you're like, yeah, I think it's kind of gross that my mom makes out with him all the time. Yeah. You know, it's it's a little weird, but like, I'm happy for her though. That's cool. I just like don't want to see it. A hundred percent. Let's have the conversation. I was watching Nikki Haverstock and her husband, uh, John, and I think it was 
John, or maybe they were both talking about in this episode how, you know, Christine is talking about buying the house and which side of the bed David sleeps on. But like the unspoken part of that is the fact that it sounds like they're having sex. Oh, for sure. Sounds like they're having sex before marriage. Yep. Sounds like that they're in an unconventional type relationship, at least compared to the way that Christine used to not just live, but champion. Mm -hmm. Like she was the biggest cheerleader for polygamy as the princess of the AUB. And now all of a sudden you want to just have um, premarital sex, which is fine. I'm not judging you for <laughs> yeah. that. But there's no conversation about it. Right. Like this arc that you went on from being a full-on polygamist and a full-on Mormon, and now you're not in the faith anymore. Now all of a sudden you're drinking, you've got tattoos, and you're yep. fucking this man. Yep. That's interesting to me. Yeah. Is there a reason we're not talking about this and instead just watching you go to f f like one banal house to another banal house and talking right. about your double oven? I don't care. <laughs> I know. It's super weird. Like all we get is like a little blurb of Christine saying that their religion was bullshit and she doesn't subscribe to it anymore. Doesn't feel the need to get a release from the church mm -hmm. leaders because they don't tell her what to do. And that's it. Okay. I'd love to know how you came to that conclusion. Yes. When did that happen? Did that happen before you left Cody? Mm -hmm. After you left Cody? Like it's so hard to get like an honest timeline. And that's why like the whole Christine and David stuff just feels a bit rushed to me in the season. Like I wish we could have saw this like, I don't know next season or maybe later in this season it's just been the entire season of their mm -hmm. dating arc which is great like i again i'm super happy for christine i'm glad she found her man i'm glad that he's treating her well eating her well that's great i'm so happy for her mm -hmm. she deserves that but it just feels so rushed like i would have loved a season or at least the majority of the episodes in the season focused around like how everybody's dealing with the divorce, like how we're separating assets, how we're going through stuff, like how we're dealing with the faith or lack thereof. Yes. Like that would have been way more interesting. Yes. And I also think that they owe it to us because right. that is essentially the premise of the show. It's their faith. It's their unconventional, unusual family. It's the polygamy. It's yeah. all of that that got a nation fascinated. And now all of a sudden we're just supposed to hear little sound bites of Cody saying, yeah, well, you know, my church leaders are bullshit and I don't subscribe to the faith anymore. And we just see Christine and Janelle taking shots and I'm right. just like but we're not having conversations like that's what this show's about yeah that's what we want to know oh I hate it for us I know me too but we're still gonna watch of course I'm just I'm just frustrated and, and I think a lot of people are and I know a lot of content creators around Sister Wives are also very frustrated yeah definitely. speaking of frustrated people <laughs> i understand that we have a couple of raccoons yeah who have called into the dumpster by the way if you would like to do so first of all we would love to hear from you yes it's not a party without you my friend for real all you have to do is go to speakpipe.com slash reality tv cringe you can sound off about just about anything but like seems to me people want to talk about sister wives oh yeah all the time so who's called in the first one we have is from Lauren. Lauren. Mm. Hi, ladies. Um, this is Lauren from the uh, Florida Raccoon Dumpster. We eating good down here. There's a lot of Florida trash down here. Just getting fat on. Um, so first off, love you guys. Love your politically incorrect decisions. Been a raccoon from the beginning. I want to say that, like, I know all the things I'm about to say are absolutely horrible, and I hate myself for them. And I feel free to break me. And I don't know what's wrong with me. I need to check myself in a mental health institution. However, Cody, I don't know what's wrong with me. He looks fuckable this season. Like when I say I'm like, damn, he's like, he's horrible. He looks fine. I don't, I feel horrible for saying that. Also, um, sometimes I feel really bad for Robin. I know that's also horrible. I, I think that, you know, it's easy for us as women to blame other women for men's bad bullshit. And sometimes I just think that she's doing what Cody tells her to do. And it's just... I don't know. I just think she just follows whatever he says. She's very brainwashed. And if I had come into the family with small children, I don't know if I would have wanted Christine and them to be raising my kids because it just seemed like a lot of feral child raising. And I, I don't know. I don't know if I would have wanted my kids to be raised by them either. I know that's horrible to say. Feel free to say terrible things about me. And I love you too. And I don't know what's wrong with me. I know these are horrible takes and Christine gets on my last nerve. Okay. Bye. Love you too. Mwah. Oh my gosh, Lauren, we would <laughs> never this. berate you. I think your points are really interesting. And except unhinged. Except for the first one. 
That was really funny. Except for the first one about Cody being looking very fuckable. Looking very fuckable. Well, he's got that six pack abs. He's got that nice tight body. He references a six pack (laughs) abs. Like I haven't ever seen the abs. The last time, like we saw the abs, he was running into the pond in the (laughs) syphilitic or leprotic prairie dog pond on Coyote Pass. Like that just looked like a beer belly to me. A little bit. But I mean, fuckable, you say, Lauren. (laughs) That's very interesting. Like, I don't share your uh, personal opinion on that, but I do respect your right to yeah, have that opinion. That's totally fine. I've seen a few people on Reddit actually talk about this, being like, Ooh. I hate him so much, but, like, he's not, like, a conventionally ugly man. Like, especially when he was younger, he mm-hmm. wasn't, like, super ugly. And this is coming from a lesbian right Yeah, here. no. I mean, you know what I mean? Yeah, no. He definitely, objectively, he wasn't repulsive. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, yeah, I could see how some women out there might find him attractive. It could have never been me. You don't like blondes. I don't like blondes, but I mean, but I just could never, just his boyish look. Yeah, yeah. Something about him I don't like, but I could see how women would find him handsome. Right, and if he just didn't talk or didn't act. Or didn't animate or was not, (laughs) I'm not going to say that. That would be terrible. Talk about a bad take. But I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm sure that there are some people out there who would fuck Cody Brown? <laughs> I guess Lauren might be one of those people in Florida. She's lost her raccoon mind. It's hilarious. Now, what did she say about Robin? She said she sometimes feels bad for Robin because sometimes she might be just doing what Cody tells her to do. Mm-hmm. She might be very manipulated and brainwashed, which I can understand the sentiment. Like, we've had these conversations before on the podcast. Like, and even Ethel and I talk about it. Sometimes she'll, she'll text me because she'll watch this and she'll be like, sometimes I feel bad for Robin. And I'm like, no, like I can totally see your point. But Robin is terrible herself. Like it's like I said a couple episodes ago when you're married to somebody like this, like how can you not be also terrible? You know, and like mm-hmm. she's defending him constantly and like saying all these lies and bullshit to make try and make him look good. Like she's just as complicit. I would want to feel bad for her if she actually had good intentions, but I don't think she does. I don't either. I think that it's all just a ruse. Yeah. I think she's a demon. (laughs) I think she's a devil. I think she's possessed by a spirit of greed. Yeah. I think she's a terrible person, personally, and I think that she's got Cody, who is a dumb individual. For sure. He has a low IQ, honey. 100%. She's got... Cody wrapped around her little finger, just like she said last week. It's absolutely true. She knows it, but she needs to play the victim because that is the only way people like Lauren Mm -hmm. (laughs) find it within themselves to have a little compassion for her. Like, I can see how you might think that. I just don't agree with that. Yeah. At all. What about her last point about when Robin came into the family with small children, not Uh, wanting the other wives to raise them? 100% agree. Yeah, no, I I think 100% agree. I mean, if you're entering into this family Mm -hmm. and Christine, the basement wife, is the primary child care provider. Yeah. And she's all loosey-goosey and screaming throughout the house and doing her jingles of course i'm speaking about myself but (laughs) she's just like she seems a bit like a wild card and if you as a parent have a certain way of bringing up your own Mm -hmm. children in a very organized fashion and it's the way that you know like yeah i wouldn't want to hand over my three kids to christine right i think that's totally fair but then also don't cry about it later when your kids don't feel integrated into the family or you feel like the wives don't care about your kids when you've like totally segregated them from the family. Great point. You know what I mean? Great point. But Lauren, thank you so much for calling in with I your loved unhinged your call. takes. I loved it. That is so awesome. Give us more. Yes. <laughs> I want to know more fucked up takes I, you have. I think that's fantastic. <laughs> it's so awesome. All right. Next one. All right. Next one. It says it's from Anonymous Raccoon. Anonymous. Anonymous. Okay. Hi, Bia and D. I love you all. Um, And I just had to tell you all the spot I had after the episode where um, the sister wives were all talking about how family oriented Robin's wedding was. And I call bullshit because in my opinion, you know, a gold star polygamous wedding at that point, because, you know, Mary had gotten her big fancy wedding and Janelle and Christine had semi disappointing weddings. I mean, I think Janelle's very happy with her wedding, but Christine obviously was not. Um, The gold star polygamy decision to make would have been, we're gonna go shopping together. And we're each going to pick out a beautiful white wedding dress that we love. And then we are going to plan everything together. 
and then we are each going to plan our vow renewal ceremony, and we'll go one at a time in the order that we came, and Mary and Cody can reaffirm their vows, and then Janelle, and then Christine, and then Robin. And then, like, I know that that would take away from the, the attention from Robin, but that's what you agree to do in polygamy. I think that would have been the way to equalize it, to make everybody feel loved and truly be about the family. No, not putting women and these women in their ugly brown dresses and taking some family photos. That's not enough to me. Um, this is how it could have been fair. And then I think Robin would have deserved gold star polygamy, a gold star for polygamy. She would have been model polygamist. Hmm. Anyways. I agree. I think that's a great idea. Yeah. I think it would have never occurred to... Robin Brown. No, never. Um, I think it would have been great this season if a producer, when Robin was talking about how her wedding was about the family, uh, if a producer had said, well, what about the wedding dress, though? Mm -hmm. What about keeping that information from the other wives? What about like taking them wedding dress shopping when you never had an intention in hell of actually listening to any of their advice or really, truly authentically including them in that decision and probably other decisions as well. Like if somebody had called into question in the moment when Robin was talking her shit and her revisionist history, like, well, what about all these other things though? Mm -hmm. I mean, I think her wedding was lovely, but I think it was deeply unfair, deeply unfair compared to Christine's and Janelle's. I thought Janelle just had like a little shindig. Oh yeah. Her and Christine did. Yeah. Little small, little, yeah. didn't even have a dress. They kind didn't of even a thing. have anything. Mary right. had a wedding, but the other two were secret. Yes. And fucking Christine was wearing like a hand-me-down dress. Janelle didn't even really have anything. They just have one picture together and a cake. So like they didn't have a big shindig. I don't think Janelle cared to have one, but Christine would have mm -hmm. obviously because mm -hmm. we see her now with her big old wedding in Moab and yes. stuff. So yeah, it was deeply unfair. And then you add on the 11 day honeymoon after that. Yes. And then nobody else gets any vow renewals or anything special to make them feel like Cody actually cared about him. So like, Robin saying this shit, yeah, it was all family oriented. It's just her perpetuating the narrative that, yeah, no, I'm I'm a good wife. I came in here cap in hand. I wanted to have relationships with everybody else. Everyone else rejected me. Mm -hmm. I did nothing wrong. Right. It's gross. That's why she's just as bad as Cody. In oh my yes, opinion. if not worse. Yep. If not worse, because she's more intelligent than Cody, and she has like a a long view game plan. Yeah. What she wants to do, and by the way, she's succeeding. Oh yeah. She's getting everything she ever wanted, and she's, she's iced that. out everybody. Yeah. And she gets to be the victim, the ever victim. Uh huh. In a multi million dollar mansion. Yeah. <laughs> in Flagstaff. Yeah. Yep so crazy very much so oh my god well thank you anonymous thank raccoon you. we appreciate you all calling in and giving us your opinions again if you guys want to do that just go to speakpipe.com slash reality tv cringe you got 90 seconds it's a hundred percent free right. and we love to hear from you we love it thank you all right now let's get into this week's episode. Again, this is episode nine entitled... Baptism by Fire. Interesting. Yeah. Okay, what do we think that means? Cody and Robin meeting David. I think that's correct. Yep. Just like, let's get her done. Yeah. Let's meet him. Let's see what happens. Yep. All right, start us off. Well, the episode started off strong with a conversation between Mary and Janelle. This was like so good to me. Mm -hmm. So good, except I hated Mary. Janelle comes over to Mary's big old house because she wants to talk to her about Coyote Pass, about the land, and how their note is due in 75 days and they got to pay it. Cody's dragging his feet and she wants to look out for Mary. She arrives at Mary's big old house. It's empty because she gave all that furniture away to her bum brother-in-law Nate, Nate <laughs> and Nate. his wife. <laughs> and she tells Janelle, I'm moving. And then we get into the conversation of Coyote Pass, assets, Janelle leaving Cody, et cetera, et cetera. Yes, we do. Yeah. <laughs> a couple of things that I noticed just um, as a supplement is that Janelle looks like she arrives in the same outfit she wore to meet Cody in the attic. I thought so too. At the bistro. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's exactly the same, but I wondered. Yep. Secondarily, the outfit that Mary is wearing, that sweatshirt, is the same sweatshirt that she's wearing, I think, in the preview next week when she goes over to Cody and Robbins mm. and tells the kids that she's leaving, oh. which had me wondering, oh, does like Mary just have this conversation with Janelle where Janelle raises her concerns and then 
runs right over to Cody's house and just tells them all the tea? Probably. Probably. Yeah. Probably. And that's what Janelle's afraid of, too. She's like, I don't know by the end of this conversation if I can really trust Mary to not go over to Cody and Robin and just tell him everything that I said. Janelle also calls out Mary's loyalty and says she's loyal to a fault, just like a dog. Mm -hmm. Like even an abused dog goes back to their abuser over Mm -hmm. and over again. And that's fucking Mary. Yes. And it's frustrating to me because Janelle's literally having like a plain as day conversation with her. Like, look, you need to protect your assets. Cody keeps telling me he doesn't have the money to pay off Coyote Pass. We have to pay it off in 75 days or we're going to lose it all. This is like your only estate. Like, you need to make sure you're protected here. You only have your name on one plot, and it's tied to me and Cody. She has her name on one plot, so and that plot has three names on mm-hmm. it. So she's not even going to get 25%, which she would be owed, and Janelle agrees. She would be getting 33% of 25%, whatever exactly. that ends up being, like a very minuscule amount. Yep. But she doesn't seem... To really fucking care. Like this whole interaction was so strange to me. It's obvious there's like no love lost between Janelle and Mary. I think Janelle was trying to do her a solid and Mm -hmm. say, hey, this is kind of a critical situation. I think Janelle would have been open to them potentially retaining counsel together Mm -hmm. to explore their options sort of as a team against Cody. She's probably trying to take the temperature, but like what Mary was giving her was just like, yeah, absolutely not. I trust Cody. He's a gentleman. And I'm like, Mary, Mary, this is what pissed me off. I'm just sick of you already, Mary. I mean, like, stop it. Like she's even trying to defend him when, Janelle's like, he doesn't have the money. He's telling me he doesn't have the money. Mary in her talking head is like, well, Cody's always been creative with finances. Sometimes you have to rob Peter to pay Paul. So like, Uh he'll figure it out. And I expect him to, because I expect him to be a gentleman and make sure that we're not screwed over. What the fuck do you uh, mean? Based on what though? Why are we expecting Cody to be a gentleman to you, Mary? After he's jerked you around this entire time. For 10 years. He got you to move to Flagstaff on a fucking faulty premise, telling you that he was going to work on your relationship as soon as you got there and he got all of your money so that he could funnel it into Robin's McMansion Mm -hmm. and then as soon as you got there it was a bait and switch and he never fucking saw you again furthermore the last three seasons which you have watched back he has been maligning you and dragging you and talking to you like you're a dog yep And you've seen it already. In this conversation you're having with Janelle, you've seen the shit that he's been saying. And still you're going to sit here and say, I trust Cody and tell the camera, like, would Cody and Robin really be doing all of this so that they could take all of the land? Yes. Yes, bitch. Look at their house. Look at the art. Look at the gemstones. Look at everything that they have. And then look at Janelle living in an RV. For real. Look at Janelle living in a dormitory apartment. Yep. Look at you renting this haunted house house yep is he giving you money monthly i don't think so no nope. and what was wild to me beatrice was like mary saying to janelle well i thought you took care of the money like i know we have to pay bills and stuff but like i thought all that was being taken care of i'm like what yeah so you're a 50 some odd year old woman you guys are making multiple tens if not hundreds of thousands of dollars a year from tlc for being on this bum ass whack ass show <laughs> and all of this money is going into an LLC and you, the businesswoman that you are, you don't even like want to see the books from time to time. That's like, wild Like before me. your accountant does your taxes or whatever, they're not like looking over ledgers and seeing where this money is going. Like you have absolutely no idea what's happening. Like, And for- you want to tell me to worthy up? You want to have a motivational seminar and tell me how to live my life, bitch? Miss me with that. Honestly. Like for a Capricorn too to be like so impractical impractical and irresponsible with her money and everything and you're sitting there telling janelle well i thought you controlled the money for all Mm -hmm. these years janelle and her talking head is like cody i guess i'm under the impression that cody's been telling the whole entire family that i have had control over the finances i'm just the bookkeeper which means cody was the one that was dictating all of this shit well of course but like he's also on a campaign behind the scenes telling mary and other people and well no it's not me it's janelle janelle's the one that's moving all this money around because i mean (laughs) hypothetically let's imagine a world where he is being a criminal fiduciary and he is misappropriating funds 
that has been that have been trusted to him in this mm-hmm. LLC, and he's using it to buy all of his fucking jewelry that's new every single week, and all of this artwork, and his all coats. of these homes, mm-hmm. and he can pin it on Janelle. Yeah, and honestly, Janelle, you're stupid as fuck too because you were the bookkeeper, and you said last season that you've seen where the money is going, and you allowed him to do it. So are you complicit in the fact that he has misappropriated these funds? But does it even matter because none of these women are going to do what it takes to hold his feet to the fire. Right. So this asshole is going to get away with it. Unfortunately, yeah. Because when you have Mary sitting there telling Janelle, being like, oh, you really feel like he's going to screw you over? And Janelle's like, yeah, I'm just telling you, you need to protect yourself because I need to protect myself too. And I'll have your back. I've got you. But make sure you're okay too. And Mary has the balls to be like, well, I'm sorry you feel that way. Yeah. Because she doesn't actually believe yeah. that Cody and Robin are capable of this kind of financial abuse and neglect, even though she's been experiencing it this entire fucking time. It's crazy. Like, and I think about it too, like all of these women have been in this like abusive, toxic situation with Cody. And so I can give them a little bit of grace and understand like you've been manipulated and coerced this entire time by this fucking liar this terrible awful subhuman ghoul of a person okay i get that but where was i going with that i don't know (laughs) but you're right (laughs) well i mean like i understand it but at the same time it's like if you've if you're coming out of that like how can't you just like see you can see it now like Mm -hmm. it's clear as day yeah it's been clear to all of us everybody's been screaming about it on the internet for Mm -hmm. years now but you're just choosing to ignore it and just believe that I, he's going to be good. I don't know that I believe that Mary believes that Cody would never do that to her. In this moment, what it almost mean? felt to me like she was just taking a dig at Janelle. Like, oh, I'm sorry you feel that way. I'm sorry you're not aligned with them like I am. Like, I have every trust in Cody. Like, he would never do that to me. <sighs> sorry your relationship. Yeah, It totally felt petty to me. That was the vibe. Of course, that's not what she necessarily said Mm. but i was like this is such a moment it is such a moment for girl power for you guys to align your interests and i mean if only for your kids even if you don't want the money for yourself or for your next home or for your next uh business endeavor like what about your children and every season that they appeared on this dumb show and were never paid get the money for your kids right but you don't give a fuck your apathy is gross mary yes your apathy is so gross however a little bit of a silver lining here and somebody out there correct me if i'm wrong you can write to beatrice on the ig or of course drop a comment here on youtube or on patreon but i seem to recall a couple of months ago a month and a half ago when Janelle and Christine were on their little podcast tour that Janelle referred to a project she was working on with Mary. Oh, do you remember yeah, that? I do remember that little blur, but she didn't elaborate on she what it was. She did not elaborate. Mm-hmm. Given the relationship as we see it on the television, it doesn't seem like they would ever go into business on, in Plexus. Right. Or like in LuLaRoe. It's nothing like that. What kind of project could they be working on? Ooh, maybe they lured up. Maybe, Maybe they lawyered up behind the scenes yes. trying to keep it hush hush because they know how everybody's just going to be mm-hmm. sleuthing and looking with their raccoon monocles like everybody's just waiting for mm-hmm. those lawsuits to drop. So maybe they're working on something behind the scenes, like developing a case. Yes. And maybe this is kind of the very uh, start of the process oh, please. and the communication between please. Janelle and Mary. Mary maybe calls her up in a couple of weeks and says, hey, OK, let's talk a little bit more because I tried to talk to Cody and he's not sharing with me about the land. So maybe this is the beginning, the start of something beautiful. Maybe. But I don't know. Based on this particular scene, I was just like, God, Mary, you're a lost cause you're hopeless For you're real. irredeemable it's so like annoying you, you, it's almost like you refuse to learn right and see it for what it is. I mean, like, just admit to yourself that you were in love with this guy who treated you badly and treated you, uh, treated all these women badly and fucked you guys all over. Yeah. Like, just admit it. That's okay. Like, it's okay that you still wanted the relationship to work. It's okay that you wanted him to be a different person than who he is now. That's all fine. But, like, she's still... 
I don't know, holding on to some kind of like weird hope. Like, no, he's a good guy. Or... Yo, Janelle is doing the same thing current year of Our Lord 2024. I think she had an interview in the last two weeks where she was talking in somewhat glowing terms about oh, Cody. Calling him charismatic. No, it wasn't the charismatic interview. Oh. It was after that. Like she was not coming down on Cody and I really shouldn't talk about it since I don't have it right in front of me but I just remember hearing about it and actually just going astral immediately like I can't with these women like <laughs> what the fuck why are you speaking about him in these positive terms Garrison is gone I know right Babe is crying on the television right Maddie Brush is an angry woman with the podcast honey. yeah <laughs> all of these children are upset and you're yeah. gonna still sit here after being complicit all of these years allowing this to happen to your family you're gonna sit here and talk about Cody in somewhat glowing terms like, fuck you, fuck TLC, fuck this production house, fuck it all. I'm getting so irritated. It's really annoying. I think they're trying to be soft for the network. Like they're trying to be soft for the show. And I'm like, but it would why? be so much Ooh, better if you guys were just honest and fucking ruthless and just tore into them. Like so we much tore better. into them. So much It would be better. so good. They would be so fucking popular. Like people would be watching this shit all the time. Oh my if God. fucking Mary was like, yeah, Cody's terrible in bed. He's such a piece of shit. He's so fucking selfish. <laughs> Janelle being like, yeah, I, I really hate this guy. He financially abused me. Like, if they just were honest right. i know it's only christine is the only one who's even a little bit doing it and she's by annoying. calling her huh and she's, she's annoying. annoying by calling him a deadbeat yeah and, and whatnot but like, that's in present day not it in is the in show. present day not in the show yeah even in the show it's so saccharine yes. and toxically positive like so everybody's annoying. mad everybody's hurting right everybody's divorced and nobody's talking about it you guys are clowns and this is what i was saying earlier like i don't want to see all of this stupid filler of christine and david dating and everybody's so happy oh, and whatever divorce Lord. is fucking ugly divorce is messy divorce is toxic people are mad people are crazy like we only got to see cody's vitriol the last few seasons mm -hmm. because he's a fucking monster but we didn't get to see anybody else right everyone else is just like carrying on like janelle's like yeah i'm at peace I'm like it it's been nine episodes I, yeah you just told him like i don't know last year that you were done with him or like at the beginning of the season yeah. and you're already at peace i'm so happy okay. everything's going great i'd love to hear more about all of the other feelings you're feeling yeah and like how did you get to peace right like i'm not at peace right. I'm, a, I'm a viewer of this show I'm and i'm far away <laughs> from peace bitch yeah. how did we get to peace exactly <sighs> these fake ass people and now it could be that a lot of what they say is getting edited out after Maybe. the fact. You can tell in a lot of these sit down yeah. scenes that these are chopped up conversations. Like yeah. what were they actually saying? What would the totality of that conversation look and feel like? I have no idea. Right. Because TLC sucks so much ass. Mm -hmm. But like it's very frustrating. It's really very frustrating to yeah. me. It's really dumb because we have this really awesome scene with Mary and Janelle, right? And then we pan over to Cody oh. shoveling snow oh. with his real family, Robin's kids. And they're just, they're not even really shoveling they snow. They don't seem to know how to <laughs> shovel snow. We've got Ariella just Backing taking her shovel car. straight to the truck, yeah. which I loved. That Thank was you. great because was... Cody got mad and had and to uh, stop yeah, himself. Karma's a bitch. Just, yep. just fucking take this fucking fuck car. <laughs> Um, yeah. And I'm like, why are we doing this? Why right. do we have to have filler content? Why do we have to see Cody in an allegedly happy family situation where everyone looks uncomfortable? Right. It's so stupid. And then we have more filler with Christine and David going house hunting. I'm sorry, but this is TLC. This yeah. isn't HGTV. Right. I don't care about seeing three houses and they pick yes or no. And if there's a double oven and if they like how big the driveway is. I don't care. Oh, God. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> I so love dumb. to go to open houses and I love to look at houses. Sure. But I'm like interested in like architecture and craftsmen and things like different kinds of houses and different appointments. I don't need to go in and see the same old white box <laughs> of a house, of a blueprint yeah. of a house from this lame suburb to that lame mm -hmm. suburb and have Christine talking about her double of it and the sinks and stuff. Like we get it you're yep. joining your lives together i want to hear about the sex i mean <laughs> wouldn't it be great raccoons if like yeah. we just had a segment where christine's like oh my god the first time 
we had sex. It I didn't know magical. what to expect because, of course, I've only ever had wet noodle <laughs> Cody Brown. And it's been about wet 12 noodle. years since I've seen that noodle. So yes. I was nervous. Yeah, I didn't know what was he going to think about my body because, you know, Cody put me down and then he touched me. <laughs> And my flesh quivered. Stop. And I was transported to another Stop. sexual dimension. <laughs> One I have never been to before. And then he put it in. <laughs> and then he moved it around. Stop. He Make stuck it in. He moved it around and it made me feel real good. And I was like, has this been available to oh. me my whole life? And I never knew. Mm. I mean, if I could get Christine to talk to me like that. I would that, love that. I, oh I would be so grossed out, but I would love it so much. We would so be so much. happy. I don't need to see the houses. No, I don't care. I don't need to meet the realtor. No. Nope. I don't care about the granite. No. Nope. I care about all this other stuff you're not talking about. Exactly. Like how amazing and passionate your life is. Yes. Your sex life is with David. Like it's a lot of tell and not a lot of show. Exactly. Like I get it. You're in love. Your, your tongue oh, is great. again mm. in his mouth. And we have to we hear it. We hear it. We understand. But like show more right. about the process. Right. Sheesh. It's just very rushed. I mean, their whole relationship is rushed. Yes. The whole process of watching them is rushed. Like even last year when we had the wedding special after season 18. I mean, that was so fucking rushed. Like we shouldn't have to see all of this. And even I've seen a lot of fans and Ethel included. She's like, why do we even have to see their dating? We saw them get married. Who cares? Like, I don't give a shit at all. It's just being forced down our throats yep. because it's filler because TLC is editing out all of the good juicy bits from yep. everybody else's talking heads and yep. all these other conversations. And I'm mad about it. Me as well. So let's move on from houses because yep. we don't care. I, was Didn't they buy the second house? I, don't I think know. we had seen that house on care. Instagram. We've already gotten all of this information one year previous to this. Like, I... I ugh. I'm tired of it. Me too. <laughs> the best part of the episode was Gwendolyn and Bia's engagement party because... Which was weird. It was so weird. So we have the whole family there minus Cody and Robin for yeah. now because at this point, everybody thinks that Cody and Robin are not going to come because Cody told Gwendolyn he wasn't going to be there. So everybody's there. David's there. He's going to meet Janelle's kids for the first time. He's all right. nervous about it. Well, they get in a day early, right? They get Something into now. the B&B &B, and this is where he has the meeting with Janelle's children. So it's, yeah, it's yeah, before yeah. the actual engagement party. But that was kind of cool, though, because he met Gabe. Yeah. And it was so nice to see Gabe. That was sweet. He looked really He's good. So cute. He seemed super open to David, mm -hmm. was asking David about how they met. And of course, we hear about the meeting on the app again. I and know. My Christine. God. How many times do you have to hear that? All of this jazz. Then David has that conversation with Gwendolyn, which I don't... Can we break this down? Yeah, go ahead. Because I was just annoyed as a person of a certain age. By Gwendolyn? Yeah, I was... I was. First of all, she's annoying. Yeah, well, yeah. She is an annoying Totes. person like her mother and like McKelty. Yeah. And so David, who she's never met before, I think. I don't know, actually. I don't Because that's Christine's daughter. But it seems like it's it. It's been like a month. Asking, so. Right. She's asking yeah. questions. So she's like, so what do you do? And David's like, I do drywall, which, by the way, I really respected that answer because I think he owns a company. I think he owns a business mm -hmm. and he employs drywallers. And of course, he does drywall. But like, I think he's a successful person. But the way he presents himself is very modest. Yeah. Which humble. I like. Yeah. He's like, no, I'm not. I'm an entrepreneur right. in, in the drywall persuasion. Right. He's like, no, I'm a drywaller. Loved that. And then Gwen said, how old are you? Okay, <laughs> slow your roll. Or chill. But I mean, maybe men don't care. And he's just like, I'm 59. And she made a barf gesture. Like, uh -huh. yeah. And um, then David said something like, well, your mom wasn't complaining how about how old I was last night, which I thought was great. Gross. In retaliation to Gwen's completely inappropriate gesture. And I've seen a lot of people talk about, well, you know, Gwen is on the spectrum. She's not always going to be socially appropriate. And that's true. And so I can give her some grace. But like on its face, that was very rude to do. This is the first time this guy is meeting you. He's probably a little nervous to meet all of y'all. Mm -hmm. And he, you ask his age inappropriately and then you make a barfing gesture. And I'm just like, what the... What? That's rude. Yeah. And like it reminds me of my own childhood because when my mom started dating my stepdad and ultimately married him, he was quite a bit older than my mom. He was like 11 years older. And I used to call him oldie. 
but I was 13. <laughs> like, yeah. That was a typical like 13 year old thing. He used to call me shorty because I was so small and short. Right. So it was like a cute little quip that we had when I was 13. But when I got old enough to realize maybe that's hurting his feeling, mm -hmm. I stopped calling him that. Gwen's a full-on adult right now. Yeah. Like, you don't need Absolutely. to be, like, barfing at his age when it's only nine years. It's not that big of a deal. It, like, I, yeah, I just... I, chill. I didn't think that that was very nice. But, yeah. like, a few of Christine's children are actually like that. And I think it's because Christine is actually like that. Uh -huh. Christine doesn't have a whole lot of boundaries. And Christine seems to be very immature. Well, and she's telling the cameras and her children that she doesn't give a shit if they're uncomfortable or if they don't like David because she's going to continue to bang him and continue to be with him and going to ultimately marry him whether they like it or not. So, I mean, yeah, the kids are kind of rebelling a little bit, being a little snarky, being a little mean. I'm not saying that that's like justified, mm -mm. but I just can explain their behavior a little bit. It makes sense yeah, why they're acting like uh, Well, that. it's an explanation, not an excuse. Exactly, right. Uh, I did feel for David. I mean, can you even imagine being David, like meeting all of these people? And of course, yeah. by the time we get to Cody, he says, like, I'm used to this. I, right. I'm familiar with polygamy. I've got a lot of kids. Like, he's used to it to some degree, but it it doesn't negate the fact that this is kind of an overwhelming big deal for him. Mm -hmm. And it would have been great if somebody had made it a little easier for him, but it wasn't going to be Gwen. So there you go. Right. Exactly. And then I can't remember, was it the next day? I didn't yeah. even realize I think it was, this the was next over day. two days. Yeah. I blurted it out. Yeah. I thought this was all on the same day <laughs> when they all met mm -hmm. each other. And then the engagement party. So then it's the engagement party. People are getting tattoos. People are having fun. Mary, are they? I mean, I don't know. It looked kind of boring. Yeah. <laughs> very much <laughs> it so. It looked very boring. Like you had Gwen and yeah. Bea and their alternative friend. Uh, <laughs> alternative. And then you had all of these Mormons of, of a different spiritual, yeah. you know, uh -huh. persuasion mm -hmm. and then you have the parents who are like obviously freaked out let's talk about christine telling the camera that it was her understanding that cody and robin were not going to attend yeah and then i'm she says i'm mad because cody decided to come yeah like she's actually pissed that he has the audacity to go to his daughter's engagement party i don't know why you wouldn't be happy that he would be showing up because that's his daughter I think she was mad because it was last minute, like it was on purpose. And now the, the center of attention and everything has to be on Cody and Robin. And maybe I'm giving Christine a little grace here, but like maybe if she knew he was coming, she wouldn't have had David there. Maybe it would have been hmm. like an easier transition. Like she probably wasn't necessarily ready to have Cody and Robin meet David. But since he was coming, she's like, OK, fine, I guess I'll roll with it. You right. guys are going to be here. You get to meet my new Mia. Was she hosting this party, Christine? I think so. I don't know if she was hosting it. Like, I could kind of understand, like, maybe if she's the one throwing this party and she never invited them and then they've just invited themselves along. But if Gwen invited them and mm -hmm. wants her dad well, yeah. to be there, then I sure. think it is okay that he's there. I'm wondering if she's suggesting or hinting at an ulterior reason that he would be wanting to go there like just to be on camera or just to like confront david or like is she trying to message something different i don't know i could see that yeah. i mean why because i thought cody had said something to gwendolyn like a couple days prior being like i don't think i'm gonna be able to make it and then all of a sudden is like yeah no i'm gonna come that would piss me off personally if like last minute you're gonna just show up and it does kind of take the attention off of Gwendolyn because now it's Cody and Robin there holding McKelty's twins and trying to be the center of attention at this party even though they're saying we don't want to be the center of attention we don't want anybody to acknowledge us they're there for a reason in my yeah. opinion yeah that that I think makes sense um let's talk a little bit about Gwendolyn being very upset with how production handled this engagement party because yeah. remember we were hearing it I think from Gwen herself people were talking about it way back then that Gwen was upset because the attention really was taken off of her and Bia and mm -hmm. put onto this whole family conflict and dynamic and you actually really see that that was true yep. because like Although we saw Gwen and we saw Bia, like I didn't hear Barely. much from them at all. Yep. Like they referenced the fact that Gwen is gay. Um, gay. And then we don't really talk much more about that other than to get Cody's perspective, which I don't care about. Uh, like Cody's perspective is, well, God told me really clearly that it's my 
job to judge and your job to love. And I'm like, okay, well, I would love to hear from Gwen, though, like what it is like for her and coming out and that process and being Mormon and Mm -hmm. or or even maybe not even that because that's heavy, but like how she met Bea and how she fell in love and how did that look? I would have loved a little bit of context and information, but Mm -hmm. no, we just get Cody talking about how saintly he is because he has the facility and ability to love his child. Great. Which is super weird because I thought he was estranged from Leon because he doesn't accept their gender identity. That's all too. speculation. So it's like that's not confirmed. That's well, just but it's probably it's true. It's probably true. It's probably so true. So it's just a little hypocritical. So maybe that's why production put that in there to like show Cody being such a piece of shit but yeah like I just thought it was annoying that we're hearing all of the other family members talk about Gwen being gay and how they all knew that and they're fine with it and Bia is really great but then we don't get to hear from Bia at all yeah like I don't like who are you we heard her say anything I don't even think we heard from Gwendolyn but we hear from Aspen talking the same thing she said Mm -hmm. a couple episodes ago about how she feels uncomfortable with her mom and David it's and, not about them. It's about Gwen. Exactly. And then we hear from Cody and then we hear from Robin. And then we have the meetup with yes. Christine, David, and Cody and Robin. That's it. Yes. It's, so, yeah, I would be kind of upset if yeah. I was Gwendolyn, too. Like, oh, okay, you're not even going to have a little blurb of me in there when yeah. this is my party. This okay. is my event. And uh, my suspicion, Beatrice, is that she's the one who's hosting this. Probably. I maybe. think they're putting on the party. I don't think it's Christine. Maybe Christine helped or whatever. But I think it's Gwen's. And so Gwen's like, okay, so I'm allowing cameras to come in. They're probably not paying her. Mm -hmm. That money is probably going straight to Cody's LLC. Yeah. And they don't even feature them, focus on them, talk about them, other than like their little tattoo that they're getting. And even then, we don't even get to hear the meaning of the tattoo. We hear more about Christine and David's matching tattoos, which are dumb. (laughs) Besides, (laughs) new beginnings. New (laughs) beginnings. In Celtic. New beginnings. (laughs) Okay. That is so it's cringe. right on my titty. <laughs> New beginning on my titty, Cody. So cringe. Did you see that? Oh. oh, Lord. We do have Cody saying that matching tattoos are cheesy when he's talking to Gwendolyn and Bea about Bea about <laughs> their tattoos. But does he know at that point that Christine is getting a matching tattoo with David? And to that end, did they get their matching tattoo at Gwendolyn's yes. tattoo party? It's that tattoo that <laughs> they got. God. Yes. So Cody might be referencing Christine and Probably. David. I don't know. But I just also think that that's cringe as fuck too. Like Christine's kind of co-opting her daughter's yes. engagement party to get a tattoo with her new man. It's like, ew, you guys could have gotten that done on your own mm-hmm. on like a little date night or whatever in downtown Salt Lake no, but City. No, let me pull out my titty at my daughter's engagement yeah. party with my ex-husband over there turning with my red. new boyfriend that yeah. I'm fucking. Let's do every that night. instead, Ugh. Christine. Gross. Oh, before we get to Cody and David meeting, we have Mary. Yes. Mary, well, Mary walking in. Okay. So this is weird to me, right? Because yeah. she's got her interstitial where she's on the couch and she's like, I am not <laughs> going to be following behind Cody and Robin. I am done with that life. I am single. I'm empowered. And so she walks in before Cody and Robin, <laughs> yeah. who are right behind her, giving us the impression like, did they drive there together? You know, did they wait for each other Mm -hmm. so that they could walk in together? Like, Mary, you're not fooling anyone, you simp. I know. Super weird. But what did you think about Mary's interaction with Christine? I thought that that was interesting. I liked Mary in that interaction. Mm -hmm. I thought Mary was open. I liked her little catfish joke. Yeah. Because when she hears that Christine met david online she's like we got to be careful about that (laughs) um and then christine inquires whether mary's doing okay but like mary is so closed off i know she's so emotionally unavailable walls up my walls are going up it's unsafe like and so then there's christine on the other hand who's just vomiting her emotions Mm -hmm. all over mary who she doesn't like, right. who she doesn't invite to anything, right. who she is estranging herself from. So that was weird to me. Like, okay, yep. I thought you didn't like Mary. Mm-hmm. You've made it a big point to kind of say multiple times that your kids don't like her and you don't like her and you don't ever want to have a relationship with her. But now you're initiating a hug. Yep. And you're telling her you love her well, and that it's better on the other side. Uh, it's I infinitely know. better on the other side. 
Which is like so annoying. It's reminiscent of that conversation that Janelle and Christine had a few episodes ago where Christine's like, yeah, you should leave Cody. Like fucking divorce him right now. Please. Like do it right now. Like she's so pushy. Like chill. Everybody's on their own journey. Everybody's going at their own pace. Like just because you're crazy and move super fucking fast, obviously, means nobody else does. Like, I don't know. It just was super weird. And even Mary was weird because she's like telling Christine she loves her in this moment and i thought that that was genuine but then in her talking head mary's like yeah me and christine talking to each other is us being on our best behavior at this party so that implies that you guys fucking hate each other and you don't want to talk to well each but other. you don't know when the on the couch interview was actually filmed was it filmed <sighs> after mary saw footage of christine saying she's never going to be invited to anything you know like <laughs> right. like whereas right. at the engagement party she's maybe a little the door is a little bit open to have maybe. some kind of a relationship you just don't know because of the way they produced this show yeah in the moment i felt that it was an olive branch a little bit from Christine. It seemed like Mary was open to it. But at the same time, I just don't see these two women ever, 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 ever being friends again. No. And like part of that's on Mary because Mary closes herself up to literally any fucking emotion. And is very judgmental as well. Yeah. Except when it's with Cody. Like except you always have the fucking door open with Cody and you always are hoping that he's going to be a good guy and come around and like want to be with you again. It's like so weird Mm -hmm. how she's so open with this piece of shit shit but with everybody else who's like trying to look out for her yes janelle christine all these other people all of your friends that were probably telling you for years that cody's a piece of shit you should leave him you're just ignoring everybody right that annoys me yeah super annoying but yeah, she's a broken person yes she's a broken woman hashtag worthy of yeah and people should not be paying 300 dollars um for a seminar no so way. we can learn how to be a more um happy individual from Mary Brown. I know, for From real. From Mary Brown. For real. Okay, last but not least, we've got the meeting with David yes. and Christine and Cody and Robin. And of course, Cody and Robin are holding those little red-headed babies. And McKelty's just standing there because yeah. she's like, I know where the cameras are going to be. I got The be cameras here. are going to be right here Clout on this goblin. particular scene. So I'm going to be right in the middle of that. Mm-hmm. Um, and they meet. Yeah. Which and is it very was interesting. awkward. Very awkward. And even Cody and Robin saying they're talking heads like it was kind of weird. But we're like trying to be cordial. Robin looked really stone faced and judgmental towards David and Christine. Sometimes. But then at other times she was kind she of... seemed to genuinely smile. Like when he's talking about his children, mm-hmm. he's got eight kids and 10 grandchildren. She smiles what seems like genuinely right. and says, oh, my God, that's awesome. Yeah. So she seems to be polite, but it's obvious that she's very uncomfortable well she's very shy and very pretty oh that's what oh my god that one (laughs) comment my one shy and pretty wife yeah my one pretty wife who's very shy who's very shy okay why are we doing that (laughs) why are we that's a dig well are we emphasizing the fact that you only have one wife or are you emphasizing the fact that you've had four wives but only one was pretty only one was pretty that's exactly what he was doing. Yes. Disgusting. Yes. And gross. These women gave you 30 years of their lives. Yeah. The least you can do is not put them down for how they look. Let us do that. <laughs> Let us do that. I mean, even Robin with their stretch marks oh my and like God, taking the fucking little for digs real. with the physical. These women gave you everything. Mm-hmm. This fucking palace you're moving into yep. is because of these women. So let's not take pot shots at them by saying Robin is your one pretty wife. Furthermore, okay, I'm gonna stop right there. What? Furthermore, really? <laughs> Furthermore, really? Robin? I mean, I pretty? don't get it. I don't Apparently, get it Robin said to Cody, like, what if David is like this honky stud? And Cody's like, well, I don't know. I mean, I, I know that I've got her, though. Like, she, like he like really she's does the prize. regard her as the prize. Well, she's got that breakdancing pussy. Those diesel she's got jeans, Dabby. bitch. She's got-, <laughs> she's got everything and more that he could ever want. Yep. Uh-huh. Yes, and that's how she's got him wrapped around her finger. And I think it's great that he does think his wife is beautiful. But you don't have to be an asshole and a bitch ass to these other women when you're saying something like She's that. She's very shy and very pretty. Okay. <laughs> so then they're talking about the grandkids and the mm-hmm. kids. And I'm like, I don't care. Yeah. Nobody cares. But then Cody makes the comment in his interstitial that David doesn't actually look him in the eye. He's mm-hmm. looking at Robin. Yeah. And then the producers show immediately cut to David looking Cody right in his eyes. Yeah. Talking about his family. And I'm like, Cody, 
like, shut up. You're not this like alpha male yeah, that everybody's not so intimidated, intimidated by, by you. you. He looks like he's about 5'8", five, 5'7". Five, he looks like a wee man. Yeah. A wee fucking lad. Cody? Yes. Oh, yeah. No, well, for David sure. too. Yeah. But I mean, he's a little man. Yeah. <laughs> with little fucking feet. I guarantee. Yeah. And a bald spot that's growing every with year. With fucking rings it's and so stuff terrible, like that. Like a little dude. fucking leprechaun. <laughs> Ugh. more like a goblin from harry potter yes <laughs> that's what he looks like and so they're having this weird conversation i kind of loved that david was emphasizing how much of a family man he is yep and how close he is with his kids he knew what he was doing i thought it was weird that cody enters into that conversation by saying i heard you held my grandchild children mm-hmm. or i've heard you've met my grandchildren yep that's yeah. a weird way to come into a conversation well i'm wondering like Cody's met the twins before yes. this meeting, right? Yes. But how much has he spent? How much time has he actually probably spent with not them? a lot? That's the question. So I think Cody's like trying to get a feel for how involved David really is with the rest of his family, and it's kind of like a territorial type of thing. Like, well, you know, this is my family; these are my grandchildren, and it's like so pathetic because he's estranged from literally fucking everybody, and everybody at this party knows that. So it's really weird, and then. Cody was asking him like how old is your oldest child because I think he was trying to get a gauge of like how old David was he's like Mm -hmm. how old's your oldest child oh 34 and Cody's like oh okay and then there was that comment where um he asks him like you've met my grandchildren and Meg Kelty's like no he's actually babysat them by himself he's actually taking care of them Yes, and to the camera, David says, and his face got really red. Mm -hmm. Really red. The first time it got red. Cody realizes, oh, this guy is spending a lot of time with my family. And not only that, but my family, i.e. McKelty, trusts him enough to, like, presumably leave both of the twins and maybe Avalon with David so she can go get a pedicure with Christine. Like, Mm -hmm. that means this guy is embedded in the family that you gave away. Yep. Exactly. Well, as Cody puts it, the club that he got kicked out of. Right. He didn't give it away. Right. It's not his Yeah, fault. he didn't do anything to contribute he got to that ostracized. situation. Of course not. My yes. bad. And then Christine puts her head on David's shoulder. Okay, Christine. Just so weird because first of all, she's like, seems taller than David. Uh-huh. It just seems like an awkward I know. angle. Do you know <laughs> what I mean? It's like she's going out yeah. of her way to do that in front of Cody, which I know. just sniffs of desperation. So cringe. Yeah, I'm just like, oh, so stop it right now. Cringe. Like when my parents were all divorced and they all found their significant others, like whenever they had to be in a family function together with those others, they were like never affectionate. Like my mom was super affectionate with my stepdad, like all over him. Same thing with my dad and my stepmom. But when they were all together, they were like respectful. It was like the one thing mm-hmm. that I looked at my parents. I'm like, oh, that's kind of cool. Like, yeah. I'm glad you guys aren't like trying to show off to each other. French that's, kissing. Yes. Like, we don't need to do <laughs> that. Tonguing each other. Yeah. I thought that was kind of like weird that Christine felt the need to do it. I mean, I know I'm going to get hate for this, though. And the comments are going to be like, let her live. She's happy. Like, she's loved to be with her Mia. Blah, blah, blah. That's great. But, like, she's obviously doing this in front of Cody to send some sort of statement. And Cody's face does get red yeah. at this moment. But in his talking head, he's like, well, yeah, no, it's fine. Like, I'm sure they're, like, at this stage of their relationship. Like, they're happy. That's cool. Like, they're probably going to get married. It's fine. Like, he's acting unbothered. Right. But then again, when was that interstitial exactly. filmed? It could have been one whole year after the fact. Mm-hmm. But when he was there, when he was faced with it for the first time, he was definitely disconcerted. Definitely. And just the conversation was awkward about the grandkids and how Ariella, at seven years old, is more entertaining than his other grandkids. I I'm like, know. what are you saying? Stop saying that immediately. What are you saying? Your other kids who have children are going to hear that this is not something you need to be saying. Mm -hmm. but he was so uncomfortable it just sounded like he was saying whatever came to his mind which you know he doesn't have one well yeah and he's calling the little twins banditos because they stole his heart yeah but i'm like okay what about your other kids though Um, truly's also in the room what about truly yeah straight up and you know maddie has a kid that you haven't even met yet yeah (laughs) who's three years old in fact janelle's not here right now because maddie's on the precipice Uh of giving birth have you checked in no how's that going he doesn't even know no he does not because he's that checked out yeah but it's maddie's fault right it's not but lauren thinks he's fuckable (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> Lauren still thinks he's fuckable. <laughs> well, from an appearance wise, I can see that. It's just his personality and everything else about him is so unlikable and repulsive. Yes. That it's hard to look at him objectively with all of that in mind and be like, yeah, oh, I'm totally fuckable. Okay. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, if you didn't even know who he was, that's what He's I'm saying. He's just such a dastardly, dreadful, yes. deplorable, <laughs> demonic man. Yeah. I mean, and it's all man. so unearned. Mm-hmm. Like, all of his pride of self. Yes. All of his money and his assets and his jewelry. Yes. All of the fanfare and this, this feeling of success that he has. It's so unearned. That was given to you by women and given to you by TLC and yet you are enjoying the spoils of all of it. I just know any, I know when he purchased this new home for $2.1 million, he was just laughing at all of us out here because he knew our heads were going to explode. He knew his kids, he knew Maddie's head was going to explode. Uh He knew his wives' heads were going to explode and he loves it. His little leprechaun feet were just (laughs) tap dancing so happy. (laughs) Well, Karma is a bitch, yeah. as the wise saint of Jojo Siwa has said. Yes, <laughs> Karma yes. is a bitch. So it will come back to him. I know it. I'm not going to say how I wish it will. Yeah, that's don't do karma, that, right? But you can all read my mind. You know what I'm thinking. Yeah, we just, we don't It'll do that. Back. But I mean, it's just, it's, it's not even so much that he's prospering to the degree that he is and that Robin is getting all of this stuff. It's the fact that the kids, right? not even these women because they're dumb. They're these so women dumb. are so dumb. I'm sick of you, Mary. God and Janelle, you're all dumb and you were complicit, but it's the kids who deserve that money. Yep. The kids that deserve that prosperity. And it's the kids that are hurt, wounded, and estranged. Exactly. There's Cody tap dancing his little feet all the way into his new mansion. (laughs) Bitch. Definitely. Asshole. And you know him and Robin were talking so much shit after this interaction. You know they were talking so much crap about how old David was Mm -hmm. and like how he looks and how Christine looks. Like they're pieces of dog shit. Like they act all nice and cordial here on camera, but like they're talking so much smack. Undoubtedly. Because they are like the kings and queens on the on this pedestal looking down at all the, these little peasants. Right. That's how they see themselves. Yeah. And it's really annoying. And then you have Robin and her talking head being like, it just feels so weird saying Christine's boyfriend. It just feels so unnatural because she should be with our family. Uh-huh. But I can't have what I want. Right. Which you never so wanted dumb. her. You never liked her. Ever. 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 You worked hard to get that woman out of your family. Definitely. Mm-hmm. You guys are so happy. Yeah. You guys are so happy being monogamous and living in your $2.1 million mansion. I don't think Robin's happy. You I don't, don't think, think so? No, I think Robin is not happy. Would you be happy being married to Cody Brown? No. And her older well, kids no. are moving out of the house. She's got two little ones. And he's an absolute dope. Are they moving out of the house? Because I thought Dayton had his At some RV. point, they're going to get married. They're going to move on. Are they? Maybe Robin's going to keep them all like barnacles on her shit because she can't be alone with Cody fucking No, I think those kids are cycling out of her life. She's got the two little ones and she's just got Cody. I just can't imagine. She doesn't seem happy either. She never smiles. No, yeah, she doesn't seem happy at all. She seems dour. Yeah. And morose. High on Ambien. Yep. I was reading on Reddit. Somebody like did a little AMA. Um, Apparently she worked at some dog groomers business and Robin was bringing in a dog and everybody was like, no way, Robin doesn't like dogs. But she's like, no, she was bringing in a dog and she would come in with somebody else, some other woman with a dog. And that other woman was very nice, but she said Robin was a complete and total bitch, (gasps) talked down to everybody, was a absolute Karen and nobody liked her. Like, so this idea that they look down on everybody and that they think they're hot shit. If this anonymous person on Reddit is to be believed, that is exactly how she conducts herself out there in Flagstaff. Oh, M. Yeah. Again, karma's a bitch. Roll that up to me though. Roll that up to one raccoon. There's no raccoons in Flagstaff. Come on now. Roll it on up to me. Well, we have one raccoon in Flagstaff. She's trying to find the address of the $2.1 million mansion so she can go visit it because sometimes she'll have her husband go and drive to Coyote Pass and see if anything's (laughs) there. (laughs) It's pretty great. Really? Yeah. She messaged me the other day. I think I forgot to respond, but she Mm -hmm. said, um, yeah, she's trying to figure out the address so she can go and stalk the house. Yes, babe. I'm like, please do. Yes, take pictures. Make sure you wear your ninja outfit so nobody sees you, though. Yes, but I want to see it. Well, let's get to the preview. All right, preview. We have David and Christine buying their house. And I'm a Sonori. 
And then we have Isabel who's crying to her mom and crying on camera because she's worried that her relationship with Cody will cease to exist because David's in their life now. That's very interesting to me because Isabel is an adult, Mm -hmm. but that speaks to the deep trauma that these children carry within them that Mm -hmm. Christine doesn't seem to give two shits about because she's happily in love. Yep. Well, and it also shows like how it is for kids with divorce. Like Mm -hmm. at any age, it's pretty sad and pretty tragic. And you do go through those feelings of like, is all of my relationships with my parents going to change now? Mm -hmm. So I want to see more of that. Mary tells Robin and Cody that she's moving and Cody's heart is apparently broken. Okay. Nobody cares. And then David proposes to Christine in his most favorite place in the whole entire world. (sighs) (laughs) (laughs) All right. Well, we're moving things along. Yeah. Like what... um... This is 2023. What month are we in at this point? Are we like getting into the spring? Are we know. even close to the summer? I don't know. Are we moving through 2023 at a reasonable clip? I don't know. I don't know either. Uh, I thought they were supposed to like fast forward to almost present day. That's what they said, honey. In this season. So you I'm know, like waiting for that to they happen. They lie though. They lie. Oh, it's so annoying. Yeah. All right. Is there anything else that we need to say to these beautiful raccoons before we get up on out of here Beatrice well if you love our podcast I sure hope you go to your favorite podcast platform and leave us a glowing five star review ah! it really helps us grow the pod so we can get fatter up in this dumpster we really appreciate it thank you we will be back next week to continue our vitriolic conversation yes. about all things sister wives until then please don't forget to join us on patreon we're having a lot of fun there do not forget also that we love you we've got nothing but love for you. And until next week, peace out. Bye. Bye, guys.